Hi, I'm Wayne and you're on Barker's Workshop. In the following series we look at the internals of blasters and in the next few minutes we're going to look at the internals of this Nerf Trilogy DS-15. Okay, so as I've mentioned we're looking at the Trilogy DS-15. This is a shotgun blaster, it's got shells that you load and so forth. And um, to save some time, I've already taken the time to undo all the screws. This was not an easy blaster to open. It's got literally, probably easily, 25, 30 screws in it. Um, and, but it's open. Let's get the shell off. So just so, so that you're aware, this is also the first time that I am viewing it. I've never ever opened this blaster before, it, so this is completely new to me as well. All right, so on the right, we've got the shells and I'm pretty sure looking at this that we can actually remove this probably as a unit. Yeah, there you go. So you can see we can remove that. There is no screws or anything there. It just simply pushes into the shell like that. Let's put it over there. Okay, so I need to get something to point and you probably need more zoom. Let's organize some zoom here. Okay, now oh, let's just hope the zoom lands in the right area. Okay, that's a little bit too much, a little bit out. Okay. Alright, so here we've got a trigger and you can see it pulls on this whole mechanism here. This is very complicated and I'm actually kind of scared to take this apart. But this is what we do on this channel. We take the internals out. So that if you get stuck, you've got a source to come back to, to see how, how this thing fits back together. Alright, so let's just feel our way around this. Okay, so you can see there's a door, that door there at the top is connected to this mechanism and the priming handle and it's got a bit of a spring there. Alright, so, and I don't want to prime this blaster right now. We've also got a spring here and you can see that one is going to want to escape as soon as I pull the shell out, yeah, it out of the shell. Uh, and we've got a spring on the other end. That's to open the door where the shell pops out. Let's just see if I can actually remove this entire mechanism. Does it come out as one unit? No, it appears not. Hmm. Let's just move the shell out of the way. That way I can see what's going on. Okay, so there's some screws here that you need to loosen. Otherwise, none of this is going to come out. Let's remove these screws. Um, just from this angle, I can see that this blaster has quite, quite a potent spring in it. It's a very decent spring. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a spring like this um, in the blast in a Nerf blaster before. There we go. Spring screws are out, and now. Things are starting to come loose. There we go. Are there more screws? Yes, there are more screws. We've got one over here. And one over here. So let's see if I can remove the trigger. There we come. Okay, so it removes as a single unit the trigger and it connects. There you see it's got a bit of a gear there that pulls on this. It pulls here somewhere. Let's just see exactly where does it pull on. Just put that back so I can see as well. 
Okay, so it basically pulls on this white lever over here. Uh, again, I don't want to lose the springs, so let's just be cautious. Can this come out? Do we have more screws? Yes, we do. I don't want to... I want to be very careful here. This seems to be one of the more complicated blasters to open. Usually the internal videos are very short, but not this time. Okay, and there we go. Okay, we remove it as a unit, and I'll have a look at it in a second. Okay, just put the priming handle over there. Okay, so all that remains now is basically an empty shell. You can see the little door here, and this is the door that um, gets pulled down so that the shell can, can get ejected on the other side. Okay, let's not lose that a little sight. Um, and you can see there's a spring here, and it's screwed into the shell. Okay, let's put that to one side. Now let's have a look at the actual mechanism. Okay, so we've got our priming handle. This is what this is, um, and it obviously works on the gear. So let's just be careful. Okay. So you should be able to see the gears on this. This is, as I mentioned, this is the priming handle that you pull back, and you can see the gears over here. That connects onto these wheels. Um, you can see the, these gears here, and that's where the priming handle connects in. And it has a spring that connects to uh, this priming handle. It's got a little bit of a hook on it. I'm not sure if you can see. Got a hook. Okay, let's not lose that. It's already coming loose. And you can see where it connects in. It connects in over here. This is just a little um, uh, door at the top where the, you can put the shelves in. And now you can see the ARs. There's three of them, the air restrictors. Um, just, let's just have a peek at the plunger if we can. I'm not sure if you can see, look at those the size of those spring of the spring in there. It's actually quite big. It's massive. Um, a lot of power is locked in here. You know what? I would like to see Captain Xavier upgrade this trilogy DS to a K26. That might be a worthy thing to see. I think it will actually fit as well. I don't have any stronger springs. I wonder. Is this actually stronger than a K26? I've got no idea. So let's see, can I actually take this thing further apart? Um, note that there is a little spring under this mechanism here. So if you lose it, it's right underneath this. This appears to be actually kind of a sealed unit. Ah, there we go. Got it loose. Ah, there's a screw on the other side. Okay. There we go. Let's just try and keep maintain some sort of order here. Okay. So this is basically it's like Lego. Um, you just need to put things back in the same way as what you found it. Okay. 
think that's the wrong way around. Just like that. Okay, so here we've got the actual plunger. Remove this bottom mechanism. And now you can see um, <laughs> the spring. It's a bulky one. And look at that massive plunger head um, and its seal. The plunger tube itself, um, it's a decent size. Eh? Um, I, have I seen bigger? I think the megas are probably a little bit bigger than this. It's not a very tight seal. Um, you can, it, I, it could do with a stronger uh, rubber uh, seal here, just to make sure that it traps the air better. But um, just having a look inside, that gives you an idea what it looks like. Let's just get that camera angle. You can see the ARs where they sit in. I'm not always sure if it's a good idea to remove the air restrictors. Sometimes when you do remove it, you don't get the performance boost that you thought you would have. Um, just because the plunger head leaks a lot of air. Like you can see, this is not a tight fit. Okay, so let's just quickly see if I can fit this back together. So it goes something like that. this these two go around and hook into there and there like that okay turns around its brother goes exactly the same way around just keep in mind this little metal rod just to fit in that position over there. That gives you an idea of what it looks like underneath. Okay, just remember fits in there and there, there and there. Okay, then obviously I need to put this in still. It is a bit of a balancing act. in that's in I'm gonna put a screw in there just to secure it Okay, so we've secured that. Let's put this guy back in. Ah, see, I forgot this. It has to fit in there. Okay, it's not too late. Okay, 
and this mechanism is back together again um, okay just looking at this how does that this fit together again Let's get that show, let's just see. Obviously got a flap here. And I think this fitted in like this. So that's how that got secured. And now this must just fit into here. And now we've got screws all over the place. <laughs> Alright. Okay, so something I can see is that this has to push in there and you can see that goes in there as well, so Okay, we've got a, skate, a spring that escaped and it goes there here at the bottom Note that this spring here at the back, the, um, this whole mechanism has got to go over this pin. And you can see there's another area to force screw to go in. This has got a spring that goes over it like that. So that gives you an idea of the door. Okay. This had a little hook that went around 
this like that this was the trigger and it went in over here like that but I think first we have to put this primer priming top handle back in okay Now I need to try and figure out how this puts it in again. Uh, I think it's like that. The white pin there sticks into the hole over there. I think. I might be wrong. Yes, I am definitely wrong. That is not the correct place. This needs to run over the gears. I know that the, these two were connected like that. this handle the priming handle just push us through those two little pins over there That's it. Okay, so just the uh, gears was just not properly set. I think I'm happy with this now. I can close it. Um, okay, so that is done. Let's put shells back in. Bit of, just zoom out a bit. There we go. Okay, and let's just see if everything's still working. Okay, yes, and everything works perfectly. All right. Um, so that covers the internals for this blaster, the Nerf. Uh, what is it called again? The Nerf Tri Trilogy DS15. Um, you've seen the internals, you've seen me put it back together, and that is it. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, guys, please do, and I will be releasing more internal videos in the next coming days. Cheers!